This is the Wahoo Element Rival, a GPS watch from a company well-established in the cycling and triathlon spaces. But can this watch stand on its own if you're a runner? It's time to put on the Element Rival and take it for a run. Six miles total for the day, two miles warm up, and two miles cool down. Sandwiched in between that was my mini workout for today. I've got a track meet coming up this weekend. That's a sentence I haven't uttered in quite a while now, but I've got a steeplechase race on Friday. So on Tuesday, I wanted to have just a little bit of a workout just to stay sharp. And that workout was eight by 200 uh, at mile pace with 200 meter jogs around the track at Western Dubuque High School. And with that workout, I brought the Wahoo Element Arrival with me, testing out the track mode function. As well, I've been testing out this watch for the past almost three weeks now, taking it on every single run and every other activity that I've been doing over at that period of time. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this watch from a runner's perspective, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a watch that was sent to me for the purpose of review by Wahoo. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the watch, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So. With that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Wahoo Element Rival. First, let's go over some specs on the watch. It's a GPS running watch, as well as it can handle lots of other sport profiles and multi-sport as well. But as far as GPS tracking goes, it does have GPS and GLONASS inside to help with that tracking accuracy. It also has a heart rate monitor built in on the back of it like most GPS running watches do. The display is an LCD display that is not touch, which for me is something that I tend to prefer because when you have a screen that's this small, like on a watch, I don't really like to be touching it on top with my finger. Plus, if it rains, sometimes you get accidental presses if your jacket sleeve tends to get wet. So I just like to be able to interact with a small screen with buttons. And this watch has five buttons that are nice and clicky. I get a good response from it. I always feel confident that I've hit the correct button when I'm reaching for it. Very easy to navigate the UI on this watch just by feel. Covering it all is Gorilla Glass, and then there's a bezel that's made out of ceramic, which I find to be really pleasant. I really, it just gives a nice premium feel to the watch. It kind of glows when the light hits it a certain way, so I definitely am enjoying the overall design of the watch. This is my first white banded watch that I've ever had, and definitely took a page out of Jim Walmsley's book because he's been running in a white Wahoo Element rival as well. And I do think that the white does look really nice for a GPS watch. I might have to get more white GPS watches in the future. Plus, from like a review perspective, it's, it makes it nice and easy to spot. Also, in terms of other sensors that are in this, there's a, an altimeter and there's an accelerometer in there as well. The band on this watch is a nice soft rubber, very easy on the wrist. Comes in at 53 grams, so it's not the lightest watch I've ever run with, but it's also not a heavy watch by any means. And as far as battery life within this watch. Wahoo is saying that you can get 14 days of battery life if you're just using it as like a watch or like as a smart watch. Uh, and you can have up to 24 hours of GPS tracking time. Although in my experience, the way that I used it, I don't do 24 hour activities. Uh, and so I haven't been able to test that functionality. But uh, the way I have been using it as just a daily driver watch that I've been wearing all the time when I'm not doing activities, but also when I'm doing other GPS tracking activities as well. And in my testing, I can push it, you know, from full charge to zero. I'm getting in real world usage about six days uh, of use, but that means that the battery life is long enough that I can usually just put it on the charger and there's a nice USB charger that is nice and clicky, very secure once you get it into the dock. But if I just charge it and top it up, like when I have to take off the watch when I take a shower, 
then I pretty much can uh, go without having to really ever worrying about the battery life on this watch. Or the other way that I could like to think about it is, if I'm going away for the weekend on like a weekend trip uh, or a short work type trip, I don't have to worry about bringing that extra like watch specific charger. It's one less cable that I have to bring because I know as long as I'm topped up when I leave, by the time I get back, I'll still have plenty of battery life left. So those are just some of the basic specs. Now let's talk about what it's been like to run with this. Now, like I said, I've been taking it for all my activities, for all my runs uh, for the past, I guess, 18 days. So plenty of activities to choose from in terms of testing the watch. So I feel like I have a pretty good sense of what the watch does. One of the things it does really well is everything's very easy to read, even under really bright summer sunlight. So I never had a single issue of being able to see the information that I wanted to see. The information is customizable but I felt like a lot of the defaults had all the information that I wanted to see in it as well there's also like a, um, a zoom function on some of the data fields as well so if you press two of the buttons and for me I think you can customize them too but it's the two bottom buttons on the right and left hand side of the watch face if you squeeze those two at the same time when you're looking at say like a running metric screen you can either get more data fields or less data fields so like uh, that could be useful if you're trying to not really worry about too much of the numbers or if you're working really hard and there's only a couple that you really want to make sure that you're able to see you can kind of take some of those extra data fields away and you can do that dynamically during the run which is a pretty cool idea that kind of zoom mode where you're squeezing the two buttons at the same time is also useful because one of the menus that's available is you can see kind of like your lap splits so one of the ways that i've been using it is when you want to see like how what were the times for your last couple of splits you can see it it gives you kind of like the last like three splits um from your workout, but if you wanna go up the list and kinda of go all the way to the top, maybe you had more and you wanna see what was the entire workout like, you can hit the buttons like again and kind of scroll up as well. So there's lots of options in terms of seeing the data, even kind of during the middle of the workout, maybe you're during a rest phase and you wanna see like how did that first set of repetitions go. That's something that I think was pretty interesting for me to use and I actually use that function much more than I thought I would. For today's workout, I used the track mode function and I was able to use a scheduled workout that I had made ahead of time so that way the workout could be run completely from the watch. And pairing those two things I thought was pretty interesting because the track mode feature makes it so that way even though I'm running on a track and track circles like the curvature of a track is usually a little bit too tight for GPS to be super accurate for it so a lot of watches are coming up with track modes these days and so I was able to do that and it was precise enough that I was able to run a 200 meter repeats workout from it and it was able to pick up like kind of exactly where the start was for each rep and exactly where each rep ended with really good accuracy based on kind of where I was starting and stopping myself on the the line markers on the track. So that was pretty impressive. And I was able to schedule or create that workout uh, ahead of time using training peaks. Now there isn't a way to do it directly within the Wahoo Element app. There's an app on the for the phone that you can use to customize a lot of the features of this watch. You can't make a workout in there, which I thought that would probably make a lot more sense and I wish that were there. Instead, you have to use Training Peaks and I do have an account there. You can get free accounts there, so it's not something you have to pay for. And then sync it just by syncing like my um, Training Peaks account in the Wahoo Element app. And so then it was able to push directly to the watch and that all happened pretty seamlessly. I didn't have to do like any sort of sync or anything. Basically it had scheduled for like kind of today. I'd made it like the night before and it's scheduled for today. And then kind of when uh, I, I looked at my watch, it kind of gave me a beep. Hey, it says, Hey, you got a workout today. Do you want to run it? I didn't want to quite run it at the time that it gave me that notification. But when I looked at my phone at the track, I opened up the element app and it showed like for today uh, that there was a workout that was scheduled. So I was able to kind of say like sync this to the watch and then it kind of like that notification came back up again. From there, you get a special screen when you're running a structured workout from the watch. And so it tells you like the rep that you're on and what you're doing and, and I set it up to run by power number. And so it told me what the goal power number was. But the one thing about this is that 
right now stride foot pods aren't supported it can connect to the stride foot pod but it just won't give you real-time foot pod power numbers so even though that particular screen wasn't that useful to me i was able to access all the other normal like running metrics screens that i'm used to seeing so that's the one that i looked at plus there was also another screen which i thought was really helpful which gave me kind of like a schematic of the entire workout the warm-up the reps with the rests and the cool down and as i went like the color kind of filled in to let me know where in the workout i was so that was another useful screen to look at and I, I really enjoyed being able to see that then once the workout is done you can push that data you can either have it set to automatically push or to push kind of on demand um, to all of your favorite places that you might want to push data from a watch like for me that would be strava but you can also have it push up to your apple health um, there's a bunch of other kind of interactivities that are built into it so pretty much anywhere that you're collecting your data i pretty sure that this can send it. And if all else fails, it's very easy to get a .fit file out from the Wahoo Element app uh, and then send it however you want. I was able to airdrop a .fit file from my phone to my MacBook with no problem, which was just super convenient and I really enjoyed being able to do that. So with that being said, let's take a look at some um, workout files a little bit more closely so we can compare. During the time that I've been wearing the Wahoo Element Rival, I've also been wearing the Polar Vantage V2, which is generally my daily driver, so I'm very familiar with this one. This one was also, to kind of, I guess, make it an unfair fight, typically paired to an external heart rate monitor and also a stride foot pod. So a lot of other sensors, that's kind of like my typical setup is to have the watch with those two other external sensors and just to compare it to see what the Wahoo Element Rival can do. So one of the things we'll take a look at is uh, an easy run that I ran earlier uh, in the week or like last week on Sunday. And already I can see that both of the watches are kind of getting it a little bit wrong because uh, I'm going down a bunch of dirt roads in the beginning of the route and typically for these dirt roads I run just straight down the middle because there's a pitch to the road and I like to run down the middle where it's the most kind of flat and even and a lot of times they're just isn't any other traffic on there. Occasionally there's like a car or a truck or sometimes a tractor that comes through. And in that situation, I'll, I'll move to one side of the road, but for the most part, I'm running down the middle. And it looks like you know, both of them are kind of having me on one or the other side of the road, which is incorrect. Then making the first left turn, uh, it looks like the element has me kind of like really making it a very big turn uh, and heading into the grass and the cornfield over there a little bit, which wasn't accurate. But also the Polar didn't do a super accurate job either because it has me running basically along the edge of the road, but I was running kind of dead, dead center down the middle. Um, and it kind of continues along that manner for most of my time on the road. There are times where the element gets it right and has me more in the center and times when the polar has it uh, pretty close to, but for the most part, both are getting it kind of like equally wrong. So, but it's not a giant amount wrong. It, we're talking a matter of, you know, a car, a car width. Um, so it's not a huge deal, but it is uh, a little bit off. And in this stretch here, it does look like, I think that's the element rival that's doing better for a larger portion of at least this stretch. But then we get to another left turn. Basically, this is a bunch of left turns for this route. Um, and we get to the turn here. And again, both of them are kind of getting it wrong, but a little bit less wrong because once I get onto this road, the 330th right there, that is a little bit busier. Actually, it's much busier of a road. And so I usually run on the shoulder. So it's got me on the correct side. And right now the element is doing better uh, than the polar, but then sometimes it has me kind of veering off into the grass, which wasn't accurate either. And so I think they're both kind of equally close enough. I don't want to say that they're inaccurate, but they're both kind of close enough, but neither have it exactly right. Although in this stretch here, it looks pretty good for both of the watches. Um, looks like the Polar kind of is going a little bit funky there, but there's a nice long stretch here and there's no tree cover or anything. I'm just going in a straight line, uh, clear line of sight to the sky. So 
it's like uh, they both should be doing a really good job here because uh, there shouldn't be any interference. And then as we get further on, it looks like the element has me element rival has me kind of in the grass a little bit more than the polar does. So yeah, it's getting a bit wider. And so, so some slight kind of like error, not errors, but not as accurate as it, it could be uh, in this section over here. And the polar seems to be doing um, a little bit better. And then we get to the next turn, another left. And here, both of them are doing a really good job of getting me right down the middle of the road. Uh, I think, I don't think that I was on the right hand side of the road here once I made this turn. Here again, there's even fewer cars on this uh, particular dirt road and I, I al always run down the middle of it. And so they're both doing a, a really good job of it while there's a couple of wiggles kind of just here and there between both of the watches. Neither one seems to be really blowing me out of the water in terms of like being particularly bad. Um, and actually both of them are doing really, really good uh, on this section for the Vasky Road portion for the most part. There's a couple of areas that it's getting a little bit kind of wide. It seems to be wherever there's a turn. Whenever I'm just going straight for a long time, then it seems to be kind of spot on. Then we make another left to get onto Backenstad Road here. Uh, I think I said that right. But um, again, you know, some of Sometimes one is going a little bit wide, sometimes the other, but for the most part, they're doing both doing really well and accurately tracking that I was pretty much right in the, the middle of the road. Then we get onto Petersburg Road here, getting back into town, and both are doing really accurate. That's the side of the road that I was on, um, coming down and heading back into town. And they both do really well until I do actually get back into town. So right here, right around the post office, that's where they both kind of start to uh, get a little funky. The interesting thing is the uh, element rival has me kind of more like northward and the polar has me more su southerly and I'm going in an easterly direction. And so the element rival was on this side and it has me kind of going more towards this side and the tracing on the map and the polar was on this wrist and the tracing has me more on that side. So I don't know if it's just simply all down to wrist position or what, but it seems to be pretty good until we get, you know, towards a couple more buildings. Um, and then I have to make a very sharp left turn. And that's where it gets, uh, both of them start to go a little bit funky and have a hard time more accurately tracking where I was because I stayed pretty much on the sidewalk on the side of the road up through here. And it's not like town has a bunch of tall buildings either, although I am running pretty close to some of them. So maybe that's what it is, but uh, it does look like for the most part, the element rival is doing pretty good in certain parts of town and the polar is doing well. So they kind of take turns at, at being good or, or not as good. Um, coming through town here where there could be potentially a little bit more interference. So that's overall the GPS in terms of the overall distances that are involved. The element rival gave me 11.97 kilometers on the run and the polar gave me 12.06 kilometers on the run. So overall pretty close. Um, if you think about it, basically about a tenth of a kilometer or a hundred meters distance uh, difference over what was like a seven, just shy of seven and a half miles of a run for the day. So um, I'd say pretty good. Let's take a look at some other slight differences that I have here uh, in comparing these two. The most important difference that I think I see is in elevation. Now, both of these watches have barometric altimeters uh, and they generally have, are capturing the same kind of like peaks and valleys, but it's not uh, kind of like they're not in parallel, right? And so sometimes the difference between the two tracings is big, sometimes it's very small. That's a little bit concerning. And this is one area where I actually don't have kind of a reference device of known altitudes to test from in order to be able to compare the two. Uh, but I will say that I have a feeling that the Wahoo Element Rival is doing better in the altitude than the polar is. For a while, I've been kind of noticing that the altimeter in the Vantage V2 that I've been using seems to be shorting me some vert on some of my runs. And the reason I, I know this or think this is because in some of the races that I run where they talk about elevation gain, it certainly did feel like I, I had ascended more than what the watch is telling me. I do feel like the Wahoo Element Rival is probably the more accurate of the two. 
Another data point that I could give you uh, would be the heart rate, but basically for this particular day, I was using the heart rate monitor built into the Element Rival itself. And for me, I don't know if it's my skin tone or my bone structure or whatever it is, but wrist-based heart rate monitors never seem to work well for me. And so that's why I prefer to run with uh, an external monitor, but just to give you an idea of kind of like what the differences are, especially for those of you that are thinking about using a GPS watch to do some low heart rate training, I would really recommend getting that external monitor because here are the two tracings and the tracing from the Polar, which is actually coming from an external armband based heart rate monitor where that seems to work really well for me. That one is the accurate tracing and you can see just how much the wrist-based heart rate monitor jumps all over the place. I don't really fault Wahoo for this. I would get that similar type of result no matter which brand or model of heart rate monitor I use if it's coming from the wrist. So that's not really something that I consider to be a problem. And that leads me to the next category of things that I think are missing that I normally tend to rely on from my GPS running watch. One of those is power. I've been running with the Stride power meter for uh, several years now, almost every single run, every single race. I like to have the power meter on so I can get that power number during my activity. And so that's a big bummer that it's not there, or at least hopefully it'll be coming soon, but it's not there yet. The other thing that I think is conspicuously missing is that there is no uh, sleep tracking or recovery. And so the sleep tracking is moderately interesting, like telling me like, when did I fall asleep and when did I wake up and like how much of it was deep or light. I still admit that I don't know fully like what the significance of deep sleep versus light sleep, REM sleep, all that kind of thing. But what the sleep tracking is important for is that it can then typically is the basis for a lot of the recovery metrics that uh, a lot of watches can provide now. And so having that sense of like, where am I in my training cycle? Like, do I need to take an extra rest day? Was uh, yesterday's workout or if yesterday was a particularly stressful day, not necessarily exercise wise, but life wise, like how much of a strain is my body under right now? Like those are the kinds of things that I want to know from a device that's kind of tracking me all the time anyway. And as far as I can tell, none of that's in this watch right now. So overall, if you're looking for a solid GPS watch to track your activities, I think this is a pretty solid choice. Right now, it's on sale for $303, I believe. It's 20% off of its normal price. And I think at that price, it makes it a pretty compelling offering, even if all you're doing is running. However, because the competition in this space has gotten quite fierce over the past couple of years, I do think that it really doesn't make as much sense because of some of those features that are missing, like the power meter, like the recovery. It doesn't really make full sense to me unless you're also thinking about maybe using it for some of those other sports like triathlon. I have been using this watch for activities like swimming and I feel like it's pretty accurate in terms of being able to pick up my lap swimming whereas my other watch the Polar Vantage V2 hasn't been quite as good as picking up the laps and when it comes to things like triathlon there's a couple of features that I'll be testing further on because I do have my first triathlon ever coming up in about a month from now where it has touchless transitions where you just start the triathlon activity and it can figure out when you're swimming, when you're transitioning, when you're on the bike, when you're transitioning again, and then when you're running and you don't have to do a single thing except hit the button again when you're done. And even after that, you can edit and tweak and fine tune exactly where certain activities started and stopped. So I think that's pretty interesting. That's something that I'll be testing further. And also for those triathletes or for those multi-sport athletes, there's a way for it to hand off. So let's say you are swimming or running and then want to then hop onto a bike and you have a Wahoo bike computer, it can then broadcast this data to the screen that's nice and big and mounted on top of your bike so that you can see that information without having to look on your wrist while you're on a bike, which can be a little bit 
uh, uncomfortable, if not, you know, not necessarily that safe if you're not uh, a very skilled and experienced rider like I'm not. So a lot of interesting things if you're into multi-sport, which I think then make this watch a much more compelling option. Those are my thoughts so far on the Wahoo Element Rival after a few weeks now of running with this and swimming with this and cycling with it. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I'd love to talk to you guys about it down there. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to be able to interact with you in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, what's going on?